The first time I had a bagel, I fully expected it to taste similar to a donut, which I think is the source of all my trust issues. But as I got older and more mature, I'm slowly getting addicted to this chewy utensil to deliver cream cheese into my mouth. So in honor of National Donut Bagel Day, I'll take you to try out some of the most viral bagel spots in the city, and when we come back, we'll also make a recipe at home. But as always, are you excited? So Our first spot is called Liberty Bagel, named after a French lady. This place was all over Instagram at some point. We're a few years late, but at least we made it. They have great bagel sandwiches, but they are definitely known for their rainbow-colored bagels. I feel like rainbow-colored foods was once one of the biggest food trends on the internet. It's a quite literal interpretation of one of my dad's famous quote, No color, no. Back to some more embarrassing POV filming in public. I got a breakfast sandwich on everything and a classic lox on the rainbow. Let's take a look at this rainbow sandwich. A candy colored canvas with arugula and onion slices off the sides is confusing me a little bit. But maybe the cross section will save it. it look, it's looking kind of gross. Well, there must be a reason why it was so viral. So before we judge it, let's taste it and rate it 1 through 10. Damn. I don't know why, but I'm convinced that this bagel is birthday cake flavored. As I'm questioning my life while walking to the trash can to spit it out, I saw the bagel menu that shows their flavors. It doesn't say, so it must be plain. But where's the vanilla flavor coming from? Maybe I'm tripping. This is taking me back to the struggle meal episode. The vanilla cake flavors interacting with the brininess of the fish is such a once in a lifetime experience. Moving on to this breakfast one. We got pastrami, egg and cheese, extra toasted. But instead of those cheese slices, is warmed up cream cheese, so they should be better. And not to my surprise, it's as good as it looks. Eggs are perfectly cooked, and the cream cheese adds a lot of interesting texture to the bite. And I just realized that pastrami is way better than bacon in a breakfast sandwich. Best way to start the morning, 8.9 out of 10. Overall, I highly recommend this place. I don't know what happened with this one, but maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Most people get dessert-flavored cream cheese with it, so you should too. But regardless of the experience, we all learned an important lesson today. Never mix birthday cake with smoked fish. Here we are at our second spot, pop-up bagels. If rainbow coloring is the major food trend of the 2010s, pop-ups are dominating the 2020s. As the word indicates scarcity, it's almost like it won't be there if you don't go spend your money now. They even have an influencer wall. Here's our boy Jack. I used to stitch his videos a lot. I think he really doesn't like me. These are significantly smaller, but I'm not in a position to place judgment on sizes. Extremely fresh. It was kind of too hot to touch when I first got it. But the only problem is that there's no seating store so I had to walk to a Starbucks and order the nitro cold brew. Having a little trouble cutting it in half with this wooden knife so let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Hands down the freshest bagel I've ever had. The inside is soft and fluffy and the outside is chewy and flavorful. I think this is how bagels are supposed to be had. The bagel itself has way more flavor than the other place. I'm giving this a 9.3. Cream cheese is whipped in the machine because it's really airy. You can taste the scallion really well. I do like sandwiches better, but I think these are way too good on its own to be turned into a sandwich. So you just gotta rip and dip like this. Why is the weather always nasty when I try to film a food tour? My biggest fear is to yawn towards the sky and get a mouth full of pigeons. This is a recommendation from a lot of you in my DMs. Tompkins Square Bagels. Not the original location because I don't enjoy waiting in lines. What I've noticed with every single bagel shop in the city is that they sell these black and white cookies. Why? What's the significance? Let me know in the comments. The lady at the counter is so nice, and she let me in on the good news that the bagels are just like my uncle, fresh out. So of course I got it untoasted. What a lucky day. Two batches of hot bagels in a row. These are such a contrast from the last ones. They're huge. It literally makes this large iced coffee look like a kitty drink. And it's loaded with cream cheese and lox. But I have to say, the bun to filling ratio is not the most desirable. As I'm touching it, a bad feeling starting to develop. Confirmed by my bite, there are indeed cold and stale. If I wasn't told they are hot from the oven, I would have gotten it toasted. Why didn't you tell me? But I get it though. Sometimes when you're doing a long shift, you kind of lose the sense of time. The bagels might came out 3 hours ago, but it feels like 30 minutes when you're working. I'll give this spot a 7.3 out of 10. I'll come back again in the future to give it another try. It is the most filling sandwich so far. Last but not least, I'm taking all of you to my favorite bagel shop in the world. I will therefore break my streak of never going above 34th street because this place is all the way in the Upper East. I spent the worst summer of my life a few years ago living in this area, and I swore to never 
never come back. Story for another YouTube short. Walking the traumatic memory lane, this bagel literally sustained my will to live that summer. I would just sit here on these benches and stare at this church every morning. I learned from my friends from New Jersey that this is how you order. Taylor ham, egg and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Here we go again with these black and white cookies. They think they're slick. These flat bagels, when you ask for extra toasted, they get super crispy. Another bagel concept I don't quite get is that every bagel shop claims to be kettle boiled. Does that make it better? Here's a kettle over here. I seem to have disturbed someone. Look at this pink cream cheese. You think it's strawberry, but it's just mushed up blocks. Didn't want to get too emo, so I took the sandwiches home or eat it in the kitchen. Are you guys ready for the most beautiful bagel sandwich you've ever seen? Check out this massive size, and the seasonings are magically sticking on top. Usually, everything seasoning means everything falling off. Moving on to the cross section, come on, you have to admit the ratio's on point, and you can't even distinguish the cheese from the egg which is the perfect state of being. It's getting kind of hard for me to do this voiceover because my saliva is rushing out just by looking at this footage. But here's a display of emotion that I apologize for. <sighs> it tastes as good as I remembered. I'm a big fan of Taylor ham, pork roll if you're from southern Jersey. The savory notes working together with the egg and cheese combined with the crispy shell. If breakfast food is the best category of food, then breakfast sandwich is the best category of breakfast food. It tastes even better for me because it brings up bad memories from that summer. I'm just glad I'm no longer in that place in life anymore. Besides, the breakfast one also got a classic locks, and it is just as beautiful. Check it out. I don't even want to try to hide my favoritism towards this bagel shop, but objectively speaking, I still think this is the best one in the city. For the cream cheese and the salmon, to be honest, from all these shops, they all taste the same, but this one is the most balanced for sure. Overall, the reason why Bagel Works is the best for me is because nothing extravagant or rainbow colored here. Everything is just carefully prepared and perfectly done, which I think that's what bagels should be about. Now it's time to try to make some ourselves. I've never had homemade bagels, so this might change my life. The recipes from sophisticatedgourmet.com and I'm shocked to realize that I have every single ingredient on the list. So get ready for the possibility of me doing a good job with following instructions. <coughs> Starting with two teaspoons of dry yeast and four and a half teaspoons of granular sugar. I lost track of the sugar, so... Starting with two teaspoons of dry yeast and four and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar. Half a cup of warm water to bloom it. We do this to make sure the yeast is alive and I'll give you a little time lapse. Then we'll mix three and a half cups of bread flour, I'm using all purpose here, and a teaspoon of salt. We'll pour in our yeast mixture and three quarters of a cup of water, which is just three of my quarter cup measurement. I'm getting a little confused to why my dough looks like it's ready to stabilize bricks. So I grab my quarter cup measurement and realize it's half cup. Starting with two teaspoons of dry yeast and four and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar. While it's blooming, we'll mix three and a half cups of flour and a teaspoon of salt. Stream in our yeast mixture and actually three quarters of a cup of water. Now we'll start mixing with a ligma fork till it becomes a shaggy dough. Transfer onto a work surface and start kneading it. We just want to rub the dough into itself for 10 minutes till it becomes smooth. You can rub it on the couch if you want. Then into a grease bowl, we'll put in our dough. Look how smooth it is. When you put a finger in it, it should rise a little bit. Now we'll cover and rest in room temp for about an hour. When it's pretty much doubled in size, we'll deflate it by punching it down. <laughs> Now lay it onto a work surface again, flatten it a little bit, and cut it into 8 pieces. You can measure the weight if you want, but it's not necessary. Now the shaping. I'm taking a piece of dough and folding the edges towards the center so it kind of becomes like a ball. And now I'll flip it over and pull the bottom while stretching the top. This makes sure our surface is smooth and the texture is going to be better as well. Now the most important step. We'll press the thumb directly into the center and rub it a little bit. Then we'll add a finger in there, gently move it around till it comes to a circle. Repeat the same steps for all of them, then we'll rest them on a covered sheet tray with a parchment paper underneath. The recipe called for 30 minutes, but only did 15. Now comes the cooking time. We'll have a pot of water ready to boil, and on the side, we'll prepare a bowl of everything seasoning for the bagels to dip in. The concept of boiling dough is still quite perplexing to me, but apparently that's how you get the chewy texture. Once the bagels go in, they'll float to the top immediately, and then we'll boil them for one minute on each side. Make sure you time it exactly 60 seconds, otherwise it's gonna 
going to be too chewy. So just like me, it's finished after less than two minutes. We'll take it out directly into the bowl of seasoning and cover it up. Toss it around a little bit to get it on all sides. You don't want to see any bald spots. It's not attractive. You see this right here is looking pretty perfect. I ran out of everything seasoning, so I pulled out some sesame seeds. But it's pretty much the same thing. The sesame actually sticks a little better. This bagel have to have a hole in it as I'm holding back the urge to put my finger through it. Now that all of our bagels are covered up, we'll preheat our oven to 425 and put them in for 25 minutes. While they're cooking, we'll just very quickly prepare the cream cheese. We made cream cheese by accident a couple weeks ago, so you should check that video out. So the main ingredient of our cream cheese is cream cheese. It's already salty so we'll only put garlic, onion, and white pepper in there. Blend it up and maybe it's epic meal time because we got bacon up in here. Into a 400 degree oven for 10 minutes on each side. Look at this bacon flip. Now I encourage you to not use the B word in the comments because it was pretty dark when I started. At least it's pretty crispy though. Once we fold that in, our homemade bacon grilled cheese is ready. And so are our bagels. Look how beautiful they are. They kind of remind me of the Papa bagels ones because they're kind of small. But at this point, you guys already know that this channel advocates for small sizes. You gotta cool them on the rack so the bottom doesn't get soggy. It's golden brown and the seasonings are perfectly sticking to the surface. And the smell in my apartment right now is unreal. I think the neighbor's toddler just started crying out of jealousy. But I'm under the age of 30. That means I don't care about my neighbors. After cutting it diagonally, let's inspect the cross section. Look at all those bubbles in between the dough. We did a great job on fermentation. The outside crust has a beautiful color too. And as you can tell by my tongue, I'm super excited to give it a taste and rate it 113. Well, please understand that I'm extremely biased towards my own creation, so take it with a grain of everything seasoning. Maybe it's because this is my first time having a bagel 15 minutes out of the oven, but definitely the best one I've ever had. The inside is extremely soft and airy, and the outside is chewy and flavorful. It's a perfect canvas for everything. I can't imagine how good the breakfast sandwiches in my apartment is going to be for the next few days. kind of want to kick my annoying roommate out so there's more for me. Overall, I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. This recipe has really simple ingredients, but the methods of preparation takes it to another level. I try my best not to be motivational, on this channel because I'm an unmotivated person but this bagel definitely tastes better to me because I worked for it and same thing in life guys don't look at what other people are enjoying put your focus on your work and whatever you get is gonna be the best but this target Nutella just ruined it for me so I take back what I said all right thank you <laughs>